Welcome back to Train Sim World 3, and this time I'll just cut to the chase. This is going to be a brutally honest review of the new Northeast Corridor New York to Trenton route that Dovetail Games made. Well actually, it's not really new, and you'll find out why soon enough. This add-on was released on February 21, 2023. That release date seems odd to me, because the add-ons are normally released on a Thursday, Friday for New Zealand due to time zone differences. Don't quote me on this, but I did hear talk of another game called Simrail being released around the similar time, so maybe Dovetail were desperate to take as much attention as possible away from Simrail. Wouldn't surprise me at all if that was the case, and they wrote me in because I don't care for Simrail. One last thing before I go into the review proper. The Dovetail Dud thing in the title is a nickname I thought of the other day, and I hope I'm not the only one who thinks it's an accurate description of several previous add-ons. Oakville Subdivision, I'm looking at you. Starting off with one of the worst advertisements I've ever seen for a TSW product. How can being interested in the release of US add-ons possibly be seen as the American Dream? I think it's absolutely pathetic, and really goes to show how desperate they were to hype up the DLC. Oh look, the route still costs 57 New Zealand dollars, and 40 US dollars. Allegedly, this is due to inflation, but that explanation didn't come from the devs themselves. I've said words to this effect before, and I'll say it again. If you're going to charge such insane prices for these things, you'd better make damn sure the DLC is as good as it can possibly be. Oh wait, this is Dovetail Games we're talking about. The trouble is, the silly sods from Chatham seem to be the under the impression that they can still sell add-ons no matter how overpriced, underwhelming, lazy, rushed, or pointless they may be. Oh, by the way, that Union Pacific Heritage Unit pack is 22 New Zealand dollars for a pack of six reskins. Let that sink in. What I'm saying is, the devs shouldn't exploit the fanboys who just blindly go along with every stupid thing they do, and still buy all of their products regardless. As far as I'm concerned, people who aren't afraid to use constructive criticism against the devs' practices are more valuable than the fanboys. Because if no one pointed out issues with the products, then the company would just think they could get away with insufficient effort every time. Just like now! In the words of Maverick Hunter Daniel, without feedback and critique, you cannot further your skills in your work, or even as a person. Vote with your wallets, people. If you want the developers to actually get their act together and make a good product, then stop buying this stuff and tell them, no, this is not good enough, you need to do better than this. And that's exactly what I'm thinking. The Acela and New York to Trenton packs will most likely be the last TSW add-ons I pick up on release day for a fair while, simply because I'm just that fed up with Dovetail's bullshit. And just look at that pathetic Adri extension for suburban Glasgow Northwest, an example of yet another insultingly lazy cash grab with reused motive power. I shouldn't have to clarify, but I do not ask for perfection. I simply want the add-ons to be high quality and good value for money, and as it stands now, that still isn't the case. This Facebook post, or rather, Facebook advertisement disguised as a timeline post, confused me. It's as if they're trying to say there's loads of things to do on this route, when I don't think that's true. If anything, you're quite restricted, as is always the case with these needlessly linear routes. What you get is a whole bunch of content we've already got in Train Simulator Classic. <laughs> Trust ZTG to do yet another remake, and only a partial one in this case, instead of making something entirely new, like, oh, I don't know, 
Maybe the ski tube rack railway in Australia, or Portugal's Cascais line, or, at the very least, the Metro Electric District. See the video linked in the top right corner for a long list of DLC suggestions I've assembled. This route is 58 miles long, which is decent by TSW standards, but let's not brush aside the fact that the original TS Classic route actually went from New York City to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, a distance of 91 miles. Apparently, DTG doesn't have the SEPTA license, SEPTA being short for the Southeastern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority, so they can't include the Silver Line of Fours or whatever else runs the commuter service between Trenton and Philadelphia. Seems like a little too convenient to me, especially since adding the section to Philadelphia Freedom would have made the route longer, and therefore better. But nope, we absolutely cannot have long routes in Trenton World 3. No, instead we have to shut up stop asking questions and just consume products, only to get bored after a few runs before getting excited for the next product, and then the cycle repeats itself. Motive power wise, with this add-on you get the New Jersey Transit ALP46 locomotive, LEL, only the original and no ALP46A, with multi-level coaches as well as the reused Amtrak ACS64 with Amfleet coaches, which came from the Boston Sprinter pack. I would say that the Metroliner cab car is a new addition, but it really isn't since it was originally part of an add-on for the long-dead NEC New York route. Of course, you can also use the Acela Express on this route in timetable mode, albeit with not that many services, as I'll discuss later. Why the hell did you not include the tiny Princeton branch? And the Arrow 3 multiple unit for that matter? There is no excuse for leaving out something as simple as an extra two miles of track. I have absolutely had enough of these people always leaving out branch lines or other parts of certain networks. In other words, excessive amounts of missed opportunities. They've done this before with Southeastern High Speed. There was absolutely no reason to leave out the Sheerness branch, which is only about seven miles long, especially since it was present in the original London to Faversham route in TS Classic. Oh wait, let me guess, you couldn't be bothered to model a class 466 or 3 car class 375 stroke 3 to run on that line, couldn't you? Another example of omissions that make no sense is the lack of the Darlington to Bishop Auckland branch, which should have been present on the Tees Valley Line route. That would mean you wouldn't just be restricted to only driving the class 101 between Darlington and Saltburn, and they even mentioned Bishop Auckland in the timetable mode service list, so what gives? In case it wasn't obvious, the reason I'm so pissed off about the Princeton branch's glaring omission is because of how short it is, so it couldn't possibly have been that much extra effort to include the line. Not to mention it would have added a tiny bit of variety to the route, because you'd be able to run the Princeton Dinky Shuttle with either a single car Arrow 3 or the two car variant. Not only that, but you could have also run the Arrow 3 down the NEC to Trenton, alongside the more modern ALP 46. Another missed opportunity was in the Amtrak motive power. For starters, why was the SW1000R shunter not brought into TSW3? After all, it was present in the add-on for NEC in New York, the same one as the Metroliner cab car, and Sunnyside Yard is included on this Trenton route, so again, what gives? Speaking of NEC New York, a massive section of this new Trenton route is actually reused from the older add-on. I'm talking about the section from Newark International Airport to New York Penn Station and Sunnyside Yard. So the only section that's truly new to TSW is the one from Newark Airport to Trenton, another reason why the price shouldn't be so high. Personally, I think the AEM7 or HHP8 locomotives should have been included instead of just reusing that blasted ACS64 again. That's another thing I hate about DTG, they often recycle motive power from previous add-ons rather than making new ones. Just look at the Deutsche Bahn BR185-2 for example, and effectively this means that you're paying twice, or sometimes more than twice, for the same motive power. Where's the logic in that? As for NJ Transit motive power, again, why the hell was the Arrow 3 EMU not included? At the very least, 
They could have added the ALP 45DP electro diesel and single decker comet coaches as well. Actually, that would be just another insult to injury, because if DTG still didn't bother adding the North Jersey coastline down to Long Branch and Bay Head, you couldn't make use of the ALP 45DP's diesel mode. And what's the bet they'll eventually release that locomotive without the sensible route extension? Incidentally, the ALP 46 is closely based on the Deutsche Bahn BR 101, with the latter also being available in TSW, albeit with the glaring omission of its accompanying cab car. I've also noticed that, for no good reason, there are zero Long Island Railroad trains present on this route in timetable mode, when in reality, you'll see Amtrak, NJT, and LIRR services all present at Penn Station. Apparently the LIRR trains are present in the scenarios, which doesn't make any sense. There was no reason to not layer in the existing LIRR M3 and M7 units in timetable mode, especially considering you pulled off the same sort of thing with the Class 365 Electrostar and 465 Networker at London Victoria on the London commuter route. So yet again, what gives? It's as if they're actively trying to make these add-ons less realistic. And the absence of LIRR services is especially jarring on the run out to Sunnyside Yard, which is very close to Hunters Point Avenue and Long Island City stations. Hell, Long Island City is right above the East River Tunnels. And as if all that wasn't bad enough, you only get 40, yes, 40, timetable mode services with the ALP 46 leading. Just 10 of them see you run all the way from New York to Trenton, with most of the others being empty movements from Sunnyside Yard, services that only go as far as Jersey Avenue, or even some of the South Amboy and Long Branch services. Which, of course, you can only drive as far as railway because, as loyal TSW customers, we are not allowed to have anything other than rigid linear routes. For whatever reason, there are 93 services for the multi-level cab car leading, more than twice the amount you get for the ALP 46. Most of them appear to be full-length runs or sunny side yard movements, with the occasional long branch service represented. Actually, speaking of which, there are barely any NJT services represented in timetable mode, so the route looks way too quiet for a major intercity slash commuter route. The Amtrak rolling stock doesn't fare much better. You only get 26 services with the Metroliner cab car leading, 45 for the Acela Express, and 97 for the ACS 64. So as if the unnecessarily linear nature of this route wasn't bad enough, there's barely anything to do on it. Taking that and the infuriating absence of the Princeton branch and LIRR services at Penn Station into account, it's almost like DTG were trying to cut as many corners as possible in order to meet that self-imposed release date to deadline. I think if people stopped kissing up to the boss, as Squidward once put it, then maybe they would stop rushing things and actually take their time. What's the bet that, at some point in the future, and if DTG can be bothered, only then will they release a small update patching only some of the issues with this thing? I assume the unrealistically quiet NJT schedule is a direct result of this route being rushed. DTG just absolutely had to meet that self-imposed deadline, didn't they? There are too many deadhead slash empty stock moves, and a disproportionately small number of actual passenger runs. Not to mention the complete lack of freight trains, even though the previous Boston Sprinter route at least had static CSX rolling stock in several yards along the line, 
so the absence of freight on New York to Trenton doesn't make any sense. Hell, even the Harlem line had static freight wagons in the adjacent sidings past the Harlem River. I feel like this post at railway is taking the piss, because it seems the devs didn't realise or care about how infrequent the NJT services are. As far as I'm concerned, there is absolutely no excuse for such a Spartan timetable on what is supposed to be the busiest railway line in the United States. And this practice is inconsistent as well, especially since previous routes have had really intense service patterns in timetable mode. Examples include the Bakerloo Line, London to Brighton, Risa to Dresden, and even the terrible Bremen to Oldenburg. Meanwhile, the Clinchfield Railroad, Long Island Railroad, Boston Sprinter, and New York to Trenton get shafted with incomplete schedules. Why do the US add-ons always get treated so poorly by the developers? As far as I'm concerned, they deserve just as much care and attention as the UK and German routes, and this is coming from someone who isn't even American. I can only sympathise with and imagine all the people I can only sympathise with and imagine how annoyed the actual American players must be getting over this poor treatment. Whilst exploring Princeton Junction Station, I noticed this shocking error with the concrete path dipping below the platform surface, as well as a trackside hut that appears to be floating and to me, these are further clues that the route was rushed. I also noticed that the locomotives on AI services had both of their pantographs down, and if they did this in real life, they would not be able to move. This is not an isolated issue, as I noticed the same thing in Schnauzer Power's video. How do such basic bugs still end up in the final product, especially when it's criminally overpriced? Further up the line, I noticed these vehicles that have sunk into the ground, Maybe DTG missed this mistake during testing, assuming they did any testing on this rubbish at all, or just didn't care to fix it because ordinarily you would only see these things for a split second as you pass by on a train. Also, no proper grass details, yay! Just a flat texture with trees dumped on it. And another ALP46 with both paintcrafts down. I feel like I need to remind the devs that, at such insane prices as 57 New Zealand dollars or 40 US dollars for a standalone route, there is absolutely no room for basic issues like this. At this point I've just about lost patience with the route, and I still haven't driven a locomotive on it yet. Oh of course it has to get stupider. There's no way the concourse at Secaucus Junction looks this spartan in real life. I swear, it's as if the devs thought that players would have no reason to walk up and over the footbridge, thus missing the concourse, so they didn't bother modelling anything here. There's also a complete lack of NJT services on the low-level platforms, because clearly, the GP40PH-2B, GP40FH-2, PL42AC and Comet coaches are just figments of our imagination. Here is yet another example of lazy route building. At Sunnyside Yard, I found three signal towers that are absolutely identical to each other, or rather, one asset that they just placed down three times. Oh look, the destination displays are still wrong. This is apparently a British design, because of course Dovetail just absolutely had to use an inaccurate one. And as if the inaccuracy wasn't bad enough, I've seen this thing before on the Long Island Railroad, Peninsula Corridor, Boston Sprinter, and Harlem Line routes. People have complained about this before, but DTG just ignored us again while continuing to barricade themselves in their echo chamber. It's about bloody time they actually bothered to model a new asset for once. I'm tired of seeing the same one get reused over and over again. New York Penn Station is far too quiet, and in real life this is one of the busiest railway stations in the world, certainly in the US at least. There should be trains constantly coming and going, 
not a Spartan frequency that could rival the LIRR's Greenport shuttle. Speaking of the LIRR, I remember that Penn Station also looked far too desolate on that route, with only the occasional LIRR services present, and nothing from Amtrak or NJT. Now this, this is just insane. Why is there all this missing overhead catenary between the East River Tunnels and Sunnyside Yard? How are we still getting this issue when, need I remind you, the devs are completely ripping us off now? There is absolutely no excuse for issues as glaring as this. And shockingly, this isn't even the first time I've seen a route with missing overhead wires. But it is by far the worst case. I've seen this bullshit on three previous routes. THREE! The first one being Hauptstrecke München to Augsburg, where I recall seeing the bug at München Donnersbergerbrücke, München Pasing, and Augsburg Hounstetterstrasse. Then we saw it again at Edinburgh Park on Scott Rail Express, and at Delmenhorst on Bremen to Oldenburg. I'm appalled that Dovetail and, by extension, Rivet, could let such a basic error slip into the final product. Here is some footage from those dud stations, just to prove that I'm not lying about how prevalent this issue is. It's one thing to just have the wire missing, but to leave out entire sections of the catenary masts as well is just unforgivable. Shame on Dovetail Games for their non-existent quality control. I should also mention that the reason I despise the missing overhead wires bugs so much is because they are an absolutely fundamental component of most electrified railways, so to see DTG repeatedly forget to install the assets is just horrendous. What was the point of letting players spawn in at the LIRR's west side yard and the past Harrison station? There are no trains present at the former, and the latter is only served by the Port Authority Trans Hudson subway trains running between Newark Penn and 33rd Street, plus a branch to World Trade Center, a total distance of 13.8 miles. Of course, DTG didn't include the past PA5 trains in the game, 
which only makes that part of the route look less realistic. Driving on this route isn't all that exciting. There isn't much in the way of interesting scenery, though I will say that the station modelling is decent, for the most part. When I was running the ALP46 down to Trenton, I found the sounds to be decent as well, on par with Fanrailer's mod for the older TS Classic version. But the locomotive's performance was rather annoying. She was hauling nine multi-level coaches, and I thought she took too long to accelerate without doing a full throttle start. I'm pretty sure that you're not meant to do full throttle starts because it could make the ride uncomfortable for passengers. The brake lever is strange, and so are people according to the doors, because it doesn't move when you hold down the apostrophe or semicolon keys. Instead, you have to press the key every time you want to change brake notches, and don't get me started on the strange way these brakes are set up. I'm not going to report on the Acela or ACS64, so I'll just skip ahead to the Metroliner cab car propelled by the ACS-64. It's really weird, with the crab so camped, cramp so cabbed, cab so cramped, that it could rival the class 385. Or, in my personal experience, it could rival the rebuilt EMD G8 or DBR locomotives at the Goldfields Railway. It's bizarre how all the controls are just crammed into such a tiny space, and it looked like there was barely any room to spin the seat, so I can only imagine how uncomfortable it must be for some drivers. Incidentally, I only saw the Metroliner cab cars on Keystone services, which is prototypically accurate. At least DTG got one thing right. The normal Northeast Regionals are still hauled by ACS 64s, only with around 9 Amfleet coaches and no cab car. For reference, the aforementioned Keystone services run from New York City to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. In conclusion, I strongly advise avoiding the NEC New York to Trenton route, and only get it if it's on a steep discount. This route is a disgrace, and it does a complete disservice to the real Northeast Corridor. It's a rare thing for me to get this angry with an add-on overall, but I think I have more than enough reasons for such a negative review. I'm probably repeating myself at this point, but the price is far too high for such a poor quality add-on. It didn't need to be rushed or stupidly linear, and with such severe issues as a Spartan timetable, catenary masts placed too close to the track in some places, coaches clipping into the platforms at New York Penn Station, no LIRR services represented at Penn Station, sloppy route building, and bugs as simple as AI locomotives not having pantographs raised, it's just an insultingly lazy mess. Dovetail Games should be ashamed of themselves for their continued habit of releasing subpar add-ons, a tradition that has been going on for several years. This game should have remained exclusive to personal computers. PC Master Race! I hate how DTG made it compatible with PlayStation and Xbox consoles, which just seem to hold the game back and result in developers always making unnecessarily short routes. If they didn't insist on ripping people off and releasing add-ons so frequently, thus compromising the quality, then maybe, just maybe, I would actually have the slightest bit of respect for these developers. <laughs>